Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. My children. Yes, I'm speaking. And yes, I am here with them all. I'm revealing things never seen before. Mm -hmm. I'm revealing my truth. I'm revealing things the devil has covered up. So you would not think that my existence is true. Many of you still doubt me. Many of you still scoff and you mock. But you are not only scoffing and mocking at my anointed ones, you are mocking me. Because I am speaking. I've been pouring my spirit out to a lot of my children. I told you in the end, I would. I have been giving dreams. I have been giving vision. I have been giving words of knowledge. And most important, I have been giving prophecy. This is my last chance to wake up my children before destruction falls. Repentance, I have given you a choice. When you see destruction fall, you can get on your knees and bow down to me and you can worship me. I have given up everything for you. I shed my blood on the cross for you. I died for you so that you may be saved. But you do not trust in me. You trust in the laws you follow. I am not asking you to not follow my command. I am asking you to believe in me. I am asking you to have childlike faith. Blessed is he who enters the kingdom like a child. You will not inherit the kingdom unless you come like a child. I have orchestrated this live today. I have brought my children together. I have chosen this 12 from the very beginning before they were even born. They all have gifts from me. And there are many children I have given gifts to outside side of the 12 I ordained together. I love you children. I wish for not one 
not one to have to face destruction. <laughs> hey, Brandy, do you mind muting soon? Sorry, it's breaking the connection. I have chosen my 12 to wake you up. You are going to see some awakening here today. You're gonna feel the supernatural presence of me. I am God. I am the creator of heaven and earth. And I choose what I want to choose. And I ordain the people I want to speak on my behalf. But many of you still do not believe. Many of you <laughs> trust the laws over me. I came to save you from the law. I came to save all my children, not condemn them. This is why I can keep you from that hour of trial coming on this entire world. And it's coming, children. I told you, you would feel peace. but then it will turn to ominous very quickly. My 12 have literally given up their lives for me. They have laid down things for me. I do not have any favorites but I do pour my favor upon my children and who I want to choose for my will for them and my glory. So go ahead, children, mock, scoff. You're just fulfilling prophecy. I told you prophecies would be fulfilled this week. It's already starting. More trains happen today. That is just the start of it. There's more coming.
do you not realize I do all of this for you because I love you? Do you not realize I laid my life down for you because I love you? The devil corrupted so many things. The devil has mocked my creation. He has done things to make you think that I do not exist. But I am very real and my words are true. And there are more prophecies coming. There are more prophecies that are about to fall. My blanket of grace, it is almost over. And when my veil is lifted, destruction comes. My light show you will see. Meteorites will fall. Bombs bursting in air. Fire pour down on the cities. I don't want any of this for my children. I told you I would pull the net up out of the water. And I have. The devil corrupted the good seed from the very beginning. Your glorious heavenly bodies have to start in heaven. Because the seed is corrupted here on earth. You have spirit and you have flesh. I told you it would happen in the spirit first. And it has. Many of you are feeling the pull to heaven. Many of you are experiencing supernatural sightings in the sky. Many of you are tasting and smelling the wedding feast. My door closed on the ark. My elect has been chosen. Which is why I'm giving you a chance to repent. Which is why I'm giving you a chance to believe in me. I'm a loving God. I'm a gentle God. And my words are true.
you're going to see my glory. And you're going to know that I have been speaking to not only this group, but many others. I have poured my spirit out on my children. Some are just called to share my gospel and my truth. Some just have childlike faith and believe. But I know every word my children speak. I know every thought. And I'm trying to change your thoughts. I'm trying to show you the truth. The only way to the Father is through me. I came in the flesh so you may be saved. I died on the cross so you may be saved. Are you letting the Holy Spirit guide you? Or are you guided by your own thoughts? Are you praying to me? Or do you just pick up my book and read it when you feel like it? Do you make me first in your life? Do you ever try to wake up other people and tell them I'm coming? I gave you many warnings. I poured my spirit out on many of my children to try and wake you up. But instead of waking up, You prowled like a lion, seeking whom you may devour. But my children, with my spirit, love you just like I love you. No one will ever be perfect. You will all fall short from my glory. But this is why I died on the cross for you. I spilled my blood for you. So you will not be condemned. under your sin of falling short. I told you it was finished. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I abolished the sin on the cross. So where is your faith? Where is your love for one another? Have you prayed to me? Have you asked me?
I will give you discernment if you ask for it in a sincere way in your heart. I will not give you anything if you ask with a deceitful heart. Wake up, children. Because the time is near where you're going to have to lay it all down for me. And it's going to take a lot of faith. And it's going to take a lot of trust. Coming. Look up. Redemption draws nigh. I'm Yeshua HaMashiach. I am your deliverer. I am your rescuer. I am your Lord God. And I spoke in peace. Does anyone have a pen ready? Yes, I'm ready. First John one nine. Genesis two ten through twelve. Philippians one three through nine. James 2, 5 through 8. Colossians 1, 6 through 11. Ephesians 3, 9. Ephesians 1, 2 through 8. James 1, 4 through 7. Psalm 11. Hebrews 1, 9. Genesis 12, 12, 8. Sorry, Genesis 12, 8 through 11. Revelation 22 through 7. Matthew 14, 6 through 9. First Peter 1, 7. First Timothy two twelve. John.
John 3, 11 through 17. Luke 21, 6. Exodus two eight. Ezekiel eleven four. Isaiah 5.10. Psalm 14. Jeremiah 21, 6. First Corinthians 1, 3 through 9. Ephesians 2, 8 through 11. I'm done my child, I'm done my child, I'm done my child. Okay, uh, someone give me the scriptures. First John 1, 9. Oh, that makes me so tired. Okay. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Next. Genesis, Genesis 2.10 through 12. I'm like shaking right now. <laughs> A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and then dividing into four branches. The first branch called the Pishon flowed around the entire land of Havilah, where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure. Aromatic, resin, and onyx stone are also found there. Next. Philippians 1, 3 through 9. I have such a bad headache now. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I'm certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So it is right that I should feel as I do about all of you, for you have a special place in my heart. You share with me the special favor of God, both in my imprisonment and in defending and confirming the truth of the good news. God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. You said till nine, right? Yes. Okay, next. James 2, 5 through 8. Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? 
Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. You said till nine or eight? Till eight. Okay. Done. Colossians 1, 6 through 11. The same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. You learned about the good news from Ephraphas, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant, and he is helping us on your behalf. He has told us about the love for others that you, or that the Holy Spirit has given you. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. You said 11? Yes. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his his glorious power so you will have the endurance and patience you need may you be filled with joy next ephesians 3 9 i was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that god the creator of all things had kept secret from the beginning <laughs> next <Wow. laughs> ephesians 1 2 through 8 May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sin. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan you said till nine right till eight okay mm -hmm. james one four through seven so let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed you will be perfect and complete needing nothing if you need wisdom ask our generous god and he will give it to you he will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure not, or be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. You said till seven, right? Yes. Okay. Psalm 11. I think it was Psalm 111. No, I think it was Psalm 11. I trust in the Lord for protection. So why do you say to me, fly like a bird to the mountains for safety? The wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows on the bowstrings. They shoot from the shadows at those whose hearts are right. The foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? But the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord still rules from heaven. He watches everyone closely, examining every person on earth. The Lord examines both the righteous and the wicked. He hates those who love violence. He will rain down blazing coals 
and burning sulfur on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds, for the righteous Lord loves justice. The virtuous will see his face. Wow. Hebrews 1 9. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. Genesis 12, 8 through 11. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. Then Abram continued traveling south by stages toward the Negev. At that time, a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, forcing Abram to go down to Egypt, where he lived as a foreigner. As he was approaching the border of Egypt, Abram said to his wife, Sarah, look, you are a very beautiful woman. You said to 11? Yes. Okay. That was about the call of Abram. Okay. Um, Revelation 22, 7. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. Matthew 14, 6 through 9. <clears throat> but, as, but at a birthday party for Herod, Herodias' daughter performed a dance that greatly pleased him. So he promised with a vow to give her anything she wanted. At her mother's urging, the girl said, I want the head of John the Baptist on a tray. Then the king regretted what he had said, but because of the vow he had made in front of his guests, he issued the necessary orders. 1 Peter 1.7 And some headache medicine. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. 1 Timothy 2.12 I do not let women teach men or have authority over them. Let them listen quietly. John 3, 11 through 17. Okay, hold on. I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. You said till 17? Yes. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Luke um, 21. So hold on. What was the one oh. before that? 112? The Lord just told me. No. To do this. First Timothy 2.12. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay, so 
when Jesus speaks scripture, sometimes he just gives me numbers. And so I do the numbers based on what I hear. But when I question something, I go back and look and do first Timothy two, one through two, because when Jesus speaks, he sometimes does that. He'll say like Psalm one, and then he'll say three. So I'm thinking, thinking Psalm one through three. So I feel like Jesus is constantly doing that as a test, but I'm going to read them both just in case, because I don't know what he means in that. So I'm going to say first Timothy two, one through two, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for Kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. I did them both just in case okay. when I questioned Luke, something. <laughs> Luke 21, 6. Okay. The time is coming when all these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Exodus 2, 8. Okay. So this is about, okay, so this is about the birth of Moses. I always try to read the paragraph because sometimes the Lord always gives me a verse and then he wants you to read before that and get what he's talking about. But this one is, yes, do the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. So after that, that was talking about, um, That was talking about the Moses lifted him out of water. That's interesting. Okay, next. Ezekiel 11.4. Therefore, son of man, prophesy against them loudly and clearly. Next. Isaiah 5.10. Ten acres of vineyard will not produce even six gallons of wine. Ten baskets of seed will yield only one basket of grain. Psalm that 14. About Judah's guilt and judgment. Okay. What is it? Psalm 14. Okay. Okay. Um. Only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. But no, all have turned away. All have become corrupt. No one does good, not a single one. Will those who do evil never learn? They eat up my people like bread and wouldn't think of praying to the Lord. Terror will grip them, for God is with those who obey him. The wicked frustrate the plans of the oppressed, but the Lord will protect his people, who will come from Mount Zion to rescue Israel. When the Lord restores his people, Jacob will shout with joy, and Israel will rejoice. Can you say Jeremiah, something about like Jacob's trouble, McKenna? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Jeremiah 21 6. Oh, she gives me so many scriptures. Not that I'm complaining, Jesus. <laughs> I will send a terrible plague upon this city and both people and animals will die. First Corinthians 1, 3 through 9. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every, now have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says and he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Ephesians 2, 8, 11. God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You said till 11. Um, yeah. Uh, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. And that Next. was it. That was it? Okay. Yes. That was long. All right. Back to you, Sean. Sorry. 